This is Bill McMinn from Makeable Bob Church, and this is the Way to Go podcast, where we talk about faith, family, and daily life, putting the Bible into practical, everyday terms. Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. I'm Bill McMinn, Bradley Brooks, along with me, uh, talking about handling stress. Just really, when I say stress, it, it's kind of like the burdens of life, really, the things mm-hmm. that lead to stress. Like, I'm not giving you tips on, hey, stress. Go out and run more and exercise, not per se that. It's just just the heaviness, you know, the the burdens that we have. Mm-hmm. And I was just sharing with you guys, you know, I just saw a post by somebody who's, man, they have so many ailments in this just this year alone that some of those, you hear them and it's like, that's daunting. Like, mm-hmm. that's that's huge, bad diagnosis and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, there's, there's health issues, divorce, uh, heavy decisions, you know, that weigh on you, death of loved ones that kind of make life heavy. And I think that, you know, we, we are Christians, but we are humans. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to face hard times or you're not going to feel it with the same emotion that other people are going to feel it, whether it's grief. As, as Christians, like, we still experience grief. We're still upset if something happens to one of our kids. We're still, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. I mean, so we, we have to learn to deal with that kind of stuff because not every day is going to be a good day. We wouldn't be asked to bear each other's burdens if there weren't burdens to bear, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, where we live in a fallen world. Right. I mean, we're, we're, it's going to happen, these things, and um, just going through that struggle. and But it also helps you to be thankful for the good. Right. The good that comes out of life that God I would blesses agree. us with. Typically, a problem that you're having is not everything. A lot of times, we like to make it everything. It's not everything. So it's like your mutual funds. I'm sure they're in a lot of different stocks. Some of the stocks are down. You want most of your stocks to be up. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like me as a buyer in my day. I used to think, oh, yeah, there's some stocks or some things I bought I lost money on. Most things, I'm sure well over 90% yes. of the things I made money on, but you're going to get some losers in there too, and that's okay. And so you can't make your whole day or your whole season about, oh, man, I lost money on one thing. Well, yeah, but you also made a lot of money on other things, and it well well more than made up for it. So, yeah, I can have problems, but then I can think, well, yeah, but, you know, I have a grandson for me personally. You know, I have, I have my mm-hmm. wife and my kids and, you know, property and health and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, I do have problems, but it's not everything. Yes. But it sometimes yeah. seems like it, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes because what we're doing is we're giving so much attention to that. Right. And not the overall. And that that's like when you actually back up and like look at, wow, God has blessed me here. God has blessed me here. Look at all the good that is around me. And I'm focusing on that one thing. And we need to, it's about perspective sometimes too. No, well, I agree. I think sometimes at first, like when you first get bad news, you mm-hmm. first hear something bad that it does suck you more in and it takes a moment to kind of extricate yourself a little bit from it and just kind of step back and look at the whole picture, you know, yeah. but when you get shot, you know what I'm saying? You get some kind of wound or some type of bad news. Yeah. I mean, that can affect you or somebody does something dumb to you. Yeah. That can, that can affect you for a time, but usually when you're sitting there in good health, you're, you're mm-hmm. trying to rebound out of it yeah. as fast as you can and not let it manipulate or not manipulate, monopolize, yeah. you know, everything that you do. So it's good to remember that your problem's not everything. But also I would say for us, you know, how would I handle burdens? I would well, part of it I would embrace the reality of it. It's yeah, I, I'm gonna have some issues. I think of Solomon, he says it over and over. Ecclesiastes two, twenty four and twenty five. A person could do nothing better than to eat, drink, and find satisfaction in their toil. This too I see is from the hand of God for without him who can find any enjoyment. But he realizes, yeah, life's heavy. He makes that comment Mm -hmm. like without God, how can you even find enjoyment? So you need the Lord in your life. But he said he he felt like everything was so meaningless. He goes, yeah, wisdom's better than foolishness. Like light's better than darkness. No doubt. I'm still going to die. I'm still going to have to hand everything over. Will they be wise? Will they be foolish? I don't know. So the unknown and all these things were kind of bugging him. But then he said in this toil, hey, you know, I still can find enjoyment, find satisfaction in the hard things, in the toil in even the pain at times. I think of Christ. He suffered. Paul was in prison. David faced rebellion. Moses had people grumbling all the time. Yeah, it, it's not always easy. No, no, it's right. not. And you, you have to find, the, the, we have to remember our strength is found in Christ. And we're not, 
lay those burdens down at the cross, whatever they may be weighing on you, just praying right. and asking guidance. And, right. Well, um, I would say that's a big part. I mean, that's the next thing after you embrace praying, you definitely need to pray. But just understand that in the realm of possibility, some things aren't going to go your way. Uh, be a parent. Not not every day is a great day as a parent. You're always happy to be a parent. You're mm-hmm. thankful to be a parent, but the kids drive you crazy. Mm-hmm. And then when you're a parent of adult children, then that can be even be at times harder because you don't really have as much say. And then you're trying to guide and pray and be concerned and say, yeah, no one ever said it would be easy, but I wouldn't trade it in for anything. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say my life was always easy by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't easy to redo the house. It wasn't easy to do some of the project. I wouldn't trade it in for anything, to be honest. Yeah. It's Mm -hmm. part of life. And you know, I, I embrace it. So like you said, pray first Peter five, seven, three, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares about you. And be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So be aware of that, right, in your anxiety. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. That's how you resist the devil, right? Stand firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. You're not alone. There's other people going through mm-hmm. this as well. Don't let Satan get the best of you. What I want you be, to be doing is you take this anxiety and you give it to God. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think of one of, uh, one of my very favorite praying for verses is Philippians four, six. And the great one, it's whatever, don't worry about anything, pray about everything. And that's the gist of it. And with Thanksgiving, yes, with Thanksgiving. Yep. And that, that renders so true, bring that burden to God and then, but thank him for what you do have, what you do. Like, like I said, a lot of times we need to back that perspective up and get a larger view of, my children are healthy. Yes, one might be out of line right now, but just to thank you for these children that you have blessed me with, for they are a blessing. And right. Prayer is a key. I mean, prayer straightens out our attitude. Prayer gives us strength to face it, you know, whatever it is we're facing. And sometimes that, that's really what you need. I just need the strength to take that next step and to keep on moving. And usually you plow through it because, as I've said so many times from Psalm 23, you're not going to the valley, you're going through the valley. Mm-hmm. There's still valleys, yeah. still the shadow of death. There's still big things that loom. And I'm, yeah. I'm very positive. Like, I'm a super upbeat person. I think life is good. I mean, if you ask me, do you think life is good? Oh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Life is good. I love it. I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I, I love my family. I love being a pastor. I love working with you guys as my staff. I mean, there's so many things about this life, man. I love it. Mm-hmm. But I still recognize you can't get all bent out of shape because there's a problem on the other Mm -hmm. hand because that's also part of life and part of ministry uh part of coaching part of parenting part of working part of anything there's just issues Mm -hmm. yeah that's exactly it we have those issues they're going to happen right it's what we do with those issues that matters deal with it deal with them yes don't sweep them under the rug because then they'll come back and haunt you deal with it yes Yeah, you got to face it. I think you got to face it just head on. And I would say another thing. I would say, well, embrace the pain. Pray about it. Don't panic. (laughs) Just don't don't panic. It's going to be okay. You know, you just got to trust the Lord. You go through the paces. And it says in uh, Matthew 6, 25 through 27, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them, are you not of much more value than they? Can any? I love this verse. Catch this. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single of hour to your life? No. And it's interesting because some translations have said a single inch, some a single hour. And I remember researching, well, what does it mean? You know, it honestly means a single of anything. Can you add one of anything by worrying? Can you add one inch? Can you change the color? Well, you might change the color of your hair to gray. Uh, (laughs) Can you add an hour to your life? No, you can't. Worrying actually doesn't change anything. No. Right? No, it doesn't. So why fret? Exactly. Um, Like, back to it. Got to pray. Bring it before the Lord. It's It's challenging. It is. I'm not saying it's not hard. Mm-hmm. You know, there are and, times where there are deep concerns. And I, I don't believe that when we're saying don't worry doesn't mean that you shouldn't 
fuel concern concern when concern is merited if you have a child that is going wayward you are going to think about this Mm -hmm. in the middle of the night and you're not going to be hunky dory about it or pie in the sky you're going to realize you got a real problem and you're going to pray for them and you want the best for your children Mm -hmm. so i'm not saying Oh, don't worry. You know, don't be concerned. Be nonchalant about it. No, I, I think there are some things we should not be nonchalant about, and you'll you'll seem foolish if you are. But on the other yeah. hand, me tossing and turning all night is not going to change it. At some point, you got to drop it off with the Lord, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and I, I think of James when he talks about how we need to put our faith into action. Like, yeah, we're going to have those moments, but right. what are you going to do? You have faith. We have a hope. That's one thing that we have that the world doesn't. We have hope. Right. And that should bring us joy just with the hope that we have in, right. in Christ's resurrection. Every problem has a solution, mm-hmm. right? Typically, whatever problem you have, there is a solution. Mm-hmm. You just got to figure it out, mm-hmm. what that solution is. And I found all the problems that I've encountered in my life, there is a solution. And that was a problem at one time. I'm in a parsonage owned by the church. I got three kids in one bedroom that's eight feet wide by 16 feet long. I got three of them in there. I had to do something Mm -hmm. and wound up where we went to the house where we're at. We had, it was a fallen down dilapidated house that was, you know, declared worthless and uninhabitable. And after a year later, you know, while we've been living in it for 20, almost 26 years now, so in this yeah. place that everyone told us we were idiots for even trying to fix, we did. And it's a beautiful place. And we're glad that we did. There was a solution mm-hmm. to the problem, you know, that the Lord opened the door and, and laid that out there. Hey, here's a, here's a solution to it. If you have financial problems, typically there's a solution. You can spend more or, I mean, spend less or make more. Those are your two options. I can mm-hmm. spend less or I can make more. You know, you can't keep going in debt. That's not your no. answer. No, that's not the That's solution. not going to fix it. Right. So, but there, there typically is one that, and you can find it and you can be looking for it. I think it's important. So you always want to do, to me, I would say, you know, in most cases, as you were alluding to earlier, well, you do what you can. I mean, you, you do what you can to resolve it. You trust God uh, for the rest of it, but you do, like you said, faith in action. You mm-hmm. got to get moving and do something. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. If that's go to the doctor, if that's, <clears throat> like I said, look for a new job, if that's whatever yeah. it is. Or even another thing to help pick up a little bit more money on the side, right. whatever it could be. Um, right. If you're good with a hammer, you can build some stuff for people or right. whatever it may end up being. Oh, man, I, I bought and sold for years. I put my kids through college doing it, just side hustle. And the good thing about that was hunting for stuff on a Saturday, like when I was off in season, like going out treasure hunting. Oh, it was so much fun. I mean, we, we had literally had a blast and I always liked it for me, the whole thing of like selling stuff to see how it would go after you bought, it was like playing fantasy football, you know, you're like <laughs> all the times like, Hey, am I going to score here? Is this going to be a winner? You know? And it was, I just, it was fortunately, I mean, I had a great attitude about it, man. I truly loved it. I don't, I still do it. I don't do it as like I used to do mm-hmm. at this point. My kids are out of college and it, the only thing that drives me now is if I have a project to do around the house, then I'll do it to, you know, just get mm-hmm. some funds to do a project. Yeah. So I still love it, but there was an answer. You know what I'm saying? There was, there yeah. was, a, there was a solution uh, to a problem, but in second Corinthians uh, 12, seven through nine. And sometimes when there aren't solutions, you're just going to have to live with it. Like, you know, maybe it's, it could be back pain or something like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, because of these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in the flesh. And this is Paul, a messenger of Satan to torment me three times. I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. And he realized, Hey, when I'm weak, I'm really strong. And so I'm praying about it. I'm, I'm doing what I can about it. But God said, well, guess what? You know, I'm not going to take that away. So yeah. <clears throat> it, was, it was a humbling thing for him. He had to live with it and deal with it. And God's power was magnified in Paul's weakness. Now, that could have been, uh, they speculate he had a problem with his eyes. Mm-hmm. And he might have had like weepy eyes or something like that. Or there may have been another medical problem he had that kind of you would think would make it tougher to do the job that he did. Mm-hmm. But he did it powerfully anyway. Yeah, and I, I love how he took his <clears throat> weakness and he boasted about it because right. whose strength came through that? 
Right. We are made in God's image. We are to mirror his image. And so seeing this isn't about me, that I am weak because of this thorn in my flesh, but look at what God is doing through me, using me. And that's where we have to allow him to use us and also the being able to um, discipline ourselves too. When, when um, like, hey, we, we're gaining a lot of weight. Well, what do you do? You got to discipline. Maybe it's dieting. Maybe it's working out, whatever it is. But you have to take the initiative to no. set that stand. I wanted to say something to you about it, but I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. You're becoming <laughs> such a beast, you know, now that you're at the office. <laughs> Listen to this guy talk anything about weight. I'm yeah. like... <laughs> All right, we can talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you are right, though. Yeah. If, you have, if that is your issue or something yeah. you're concerned about, you can't do something mm-hmm. about it. But other things, I mean, you, you just don't control. I mean, you could have a neighbor, theoretically, that just doesn't like you, and they want to make your life miserable, so they'll line up all their toys on the property line, or they'll blare music or you know mm-hmm. wait till the wind's blowing in your house's direction and light a bonfire you know what i mean just mm-hmm. to drive you nuts and they're not going to be one thing you can do about it except yeah. by the grace of god just his grace is sufficient mm-hmm. you're going to keep loving those people yes. and just be a nice no matter what yes because that's about the only thing you can do yes. is just be a christian because you can't control it uh we don't control gas prices we don't control uh the economy there's so many things that are outside of our control literally that we we just have to live with it mm-hmm. and do the best right yeah no and I, I think about back what you just said about neighbors it, it sickens me especially when i doing trees all the times that hey we need to use your neighbor's property and neighbors just don't get along and right. it's saddening and it's like, okay, well, what do we, what do we and this do? This is in your not, tree cutting business. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you would have to go to the neighbor yes. of a customer. Yes. Right. To get, to get access into say their backyard or whatever the case may be. And it, it's, it's sickening how our neighborly do not get together. And as Christians, we should be, yeah, we might not be best buds, but we need to be, grace given yeah if there's an issue Dude. trying to work it out smooth out like we should not have these disputes among especially being a christian i, I would agree and that it kind of comes <clears throat> into the the final point you know how would i deal with burdens you know we're just talking about do what you can but be in community i think being here carrying each other's burdens helping each other out we have a meals team for instance so let's say if somebody's laid up and they have a surgery they can't make me well you know we'll we'll help you with mm-hmm. that uh, there's a bereavement team so if somebody has a loss in the church family and there's a funeral. Yeah. Would they take care of that? Why? Mm-hmm. It's just in that community, helping each other to carry that burden. Uh, sometimes if someone has to move, you know, some friends will come over and move. We have a homes repair team where or home repair team where they'll come in and maybe if something needs fixed or done, maybe a, I don't know, a screen door needs to be put on or something like that. And then somebody can't get to it and there may be are elderly and you know, the team will come in and, and as they can help out with that kind of stuff. So, it says in uh, Galatians 6, 2, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you'll fulfill the law of Christ. you got to carry burdens. You know, I think of my brother who lost his son a month ago, and <clears throat> I I don't call him every day. I don't even text him every day. But it's no space apart more than every other day. Like, you mm-hmm. know, I'm super busy, and some days I'm late. Did I text him today? I'm trying to text him every day. Mm-hmm. And then the other day I was driving a couple of days ago, I just picked up the phone and called him. How you doing, mm-hmm. man? I'm, I'm coming back. I was at Lowe's. I was going back home. had like a 20-minute drive. Yes. How you doing, man? How's it going? Mm-hmm. You know, just yes. talk to him. Why? Because like I told him, I said, hey, I can't do anything to change the situation. There's yes. The only thing yeah. I can do for you is is to help you carry weight. Support you. That's it. I can support you. I'm praying for you. I'm calling. I'm doing what I can to be a good brother, Mm -hmm. you know, to him. So when you take that out into the Christian community, sometimes that's what you need to do. You need to, hey, sometimes give them a car. People appreciate that. You know, if they've had surgery, hey, Mm -hmm. hey, man, thanks for thinking of me. Thanks for checking in. I super appreciate it. Yeah, and and sometimes people will be laid on your heart. You don't understand it. You don't really get it. But give them a call. It might be one of the... I'm so glad you called. Yes, right. I'm going through this. I I didn't know how to even approach somebody about it, but I'm now right. that you're calling me, it opens a door. Right. Yes, I am struggling here and there. Right. And, and just that nudge that sometimes the spirit lays Absolutely. on us. I, I wrote a guy one day, sent him a text out of the blue. He's like, you just texted me on the worst day of my life, you know. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and he was scared about something and it had to do with a child that was to be born the child's fine by the way and everything mm-hmm. went fine but he was worried about it. it's kind of like you that night you and i talked that night you were talking about mm-hmm. you know your son 
who went, went into a seizure and what it was. Mm-hmm. Well, as it turned out, my daughter had been through yeah. one of those herself and she wasn't breathing for a moment yeah. and turning colors and, and, that, and it yeah. was scary. And that's, that know? was helpful <clears throat> because right. you've been there, right? You, and I'm going through it right now. Right. And you just giving me that encouragement and she did this once and, and she came through it and that helps. Right. That helps. Even right. though I'm still going through it, it helps me have a hope oh. that, man, it's so scary. I yes. mean, and those are the things, like you said, as a parent, that are just thrown on you all of a sudden, you know, yes. you might have one break a leg eventually or yeah. whatever. Yeah. I mean that the seizure is scary because you don't even know what to do and you're not yeah, a doctor and you're not, not, they're respond. totally non-responsive. They're not answering any commands or questions or they're, they're, they're out of it. Right. They're just, you get them out and then they come through the next day. They're pretty much. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're, they're okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was like, what happened there? Right. Yeah. But anyway, I think calls and check-ins, um, those are the kind of burdens that we can help or the ways we can help people carry burdens. Just, Hey, how are you doing? What's going on? And sometimes it might mean you getting your tail end out there and helping out with something. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a buddy he helped me Well, when he had surgery over the winter, I helped him with his horses. It's not, it's not even that I had to, it's like, I wanted to, mm-hmm. I'm like, man, you came and helped me so much with my burden, which was redoing my deck. Now yes. he had his animals and his wife would take the morning, early yes. morning and I would, Jerry and I would come in the yes. evening as much as we could and just help out until he got cleared by the doctor mm-hmm. to yes. uh, handle those chores again. And I, to me, that's just being a Christian. Yes, not being self-centered. Right. That's, that's one thing with being a Christian. We have to be selfless. We need to be thinking of others because we're all going through burdens. Right. It's not like, oh, their life's great because right. you look at it through Facebook. It don't mean nothing. No, 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 definitely and, not. And But that's where we need to... Be reaching out to one another. That is the whole reason why we also gather as a body of believers is so we can gather. Hey, how are you doing? And and it does kind of bug you and it's always, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Like, are you really? But that's right. where we also need to build a deeper relationship and discipling one another and, and when you yeah. get closer. Yeah, I, I think you're on to it right there. I think the small <clears throat> groups are a big part yes. of deepening relationships and at least you know that if somebody was having a hard, pro, a tough time, they would know where to turn. Yes. So, and especially those groups where we get to spend time together and talk to each other, then you know that kind of becomes like your go-to yes. group. And maybe not to help you shovel a ditch or anything. It, yeah. it depends on the group, actually. <laughs> but uh, definitely, I think emotional support and just being there for you when things are tough. And, you know, I, I super appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and we do have that a lot in the yeah. church. And that's part of your ministry is getting people involved in these kind of, you can call them connection groups if you want to, just ways of people to connect more with God, connect more with each other. So, uh, you know, we appreciate that. And now we're running out of time on this podcast, but hopefully you've said something anyway that'll help you out. So, you know, embrace the pain, pray about it. Don't panic. Mm-hmm. Do what you can. Be in community. Bear each other's burdens. You know, I, I think that we need to not be thinking just about ourselves. Yes. Also be uh, thinking about other people. But hopefully that's helped you uh, to deal with some of these things. And we want you to have an awesome and blessed week.